Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here, time for another Patreon-sponsored Blind Reaction. And this one comes to you courtesy of JD, who has requested that I react to the second half of What by Bo Burnham. Yep, we're continuing this, right where we left off. Uh, pretty good show so far, definitely been enjoying it. Uh, lots of fun songs and just amusing comedy in general. And I'm sure that that will continue. So let's get started and see. Here we go. Thank you. What now? Okay. More mime. Oh. Okay, well, this is something I haven't seen mime before. I, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh... Uh, oh. Okay. Um... <laughs> Great thing to start on. Wow. Wow, <laughs> okay, we're, uh, um... Wow. Oh, oh, uh, I, uh... Wow. Yeah. Um, Thank you. That's called beating off an A minor. I, I see. Yes. yes. <laughs> a minor, the key, not the felony. Um, yeah, I was uh, <laughs> hoping not. I believe. <laughs> I believe there's nothing more manly one can do than take a shower with five other guys. It's true. Um, it's early cavemen, Cro-Magnum, wandering through the fog, you know, scrubbing five other sapiens. No homo. Wow. Um, we sh oh. I'd like to do a little, uh, do some um, po poems right now, uh, if that's okay. Okay. Just, we're in the po this point of the show. Um, these poems are actually from, a, I'm, I'm releasing this special for free, so I'm going to plug my poetry book. These are my new poems from my poetry book called Egghead that will be out by the time this is airing but not by the time you guys are seated here right now. So, but, uh, it's good, they're, they're pretty serious and it's all just sort of, it, it's- Yeah, I'm sure they're very the serious. Show usually, so I'd like to, at this point, <laughs> take the pressure off the audience and just read some poems and then we'll go back uh, to the giggles. So, this is a poem by a dog. Roses are gray, violets are a different shade of gray. Let's mm -hmm. go chase cars. Okay. Me, with my strange choice of adjectives. You, with your muscular teeth and clockwise vagina. Um. <laughs> I put a chameleon on a red dildo. Why? Well. <laughs> <laughs> he blushed. There oh. we go. This is a poem about beauty, about self-image, and about the ability to transform. Martha was ugly, like a shaven baboon, so she wrapped herself up in a curtain cocoon. And after a week, she finally emerged. She smelled like shit. What a psycho. <laughs> 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 
God. You're incomparable. Like a... Nice. Nicely done. Clever. I want to beat you to death with a blunt object. I want to grab one of those high-end fashion mannequins by the ankles and bash your ribcage in. Uh, I want to sharpen 50 pencils, bind them with a the rubber band, stick the lead in your mouth, and punch the erasers. <laughs> I want to strap you to a bit kind of nails of a... and strap that bit of nails to the hood of my car so I can watch you suffer as we drive over speed bumps <laughs> oh, in the ballpark lot to the earthquake. I want you to somehow survive a terrible car crash and somehow not survive a small fender bender on the way back from the hospital. Wow. Thank you, that's called Dad. I, I see. This is a poem. It's really a story that's meant primarily for children, but I think it's got a lesson we could all learn. Okay. This will be good. The squares lived happily mm -hmm. in their square houses, in their square yard, in their square town. But then one day, a family of circles moved oh. in from the west. Can't have any circles. Get out of here, roundies! Wow. Shouted one of the squares. <laughs> Why? said one of the circles. Because this is a metaphor for racism. <laughs> <laughs> when I walk into a party, you'd think I was one of those long, straight Tetris pieces because everyone's just like, oh yeah, this guy's here. Finally, we've been waiting for him to show up. Like, you wait in the game, forget it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, <laughs> you had your chance. <laughs> if I had a million dollars, I'd pay your mother to have sex with me. Afterwards, I'd probably invest the remaining $999,990, $10 for sex with your mother. Comedy. I, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> no comedy. Well, it was comedy giving off that scent. And finally, mid-October, with leaves spilled like colored pencil shavings, the streets dicing our town into neat, Unfair portions and me eating that pussy, baby. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> Song time again. Um, there's things that I don't want to come across in my show that I worry often come across about me because people don't realize that it's an act up here. I don't want you to ever think that I think I'm better than people or that I think I know better than people. Um, anyway, sorry. Okay. Uh, this is a song from the perspective of God. Uh. <laughs> well, this will be good. Books you think I wrote are way too thick. Who needs a thousand metaphors to figure out you shouldn't be a dick? And I don't watch you when you sleep. Surprisingly, I don't use my omnipotence to be a fucking creep. You're not going to heaven. Why the fuck would you think I'd ever kick it with you? None of you are <laughs> going to heaven. There's a trillion aliens cooler than you. Wow. You shouldn't abstain from rape just because you think that I want you to. Shouldn't rape because rape is a fucked up thing to do. Okay, that's fair. Obvious, just don't fucking rape people. <laughs> yeah, didn't think I had to write that one down for you. I don't think masturbation is obscene, it's absolutely natural and the weirdest fucking thing I've ever seen. You make my job a living hell. I send gays to fix overpopulation. Boy, did that go well. You're not going to heaven. 
eat a thousand crackers, sing a million hymns. None of you are going to heaven. You're not my children. You're a bad game of Sims. Wow. You shouldn't abstain from pork just because you think that I want you to. You can eat pork, because why the fuck would I give a shit? <laughs> I created the universe. Think I'm drawing the line at the fucking deli aisle? <laughs> That's great. You argue and you bicker and you fight. Atheists and Catholics, Jews and Hindus argue day and night over what they think is true. But no one entertains the thought that maybe God does not believe in you. You pray so badly for heaven, knowing any day might be the day that you die. But maybe life on earth could be heaven. Doesn't just the thought of it make it worth a try? My love's the type of thing that you have to earn, and when you earn it, you won't need it. Oh, my love's the type of thing that you have to earn, and when you earn it, you won't need it. I'm not going to give you love just because I know that you want me to. If you want love, then the love has got to come from you. Well, that was nice. Walking between the microphones. Wow. It's really awkward. Tell me about <laughs> it. Um... <laughs> Women are stupid. Yeah, I fucking said it. They're the weaker, dumber sex. <laughs> okay. I'll prove it to you. I like to practice safe sex. Why? Because I'm a guy and I'm smarter. What do women say every time? <laughs> every time I put on a condom, what do they say? Why are you wearing a condom if I'm fucking you with a strap on? To be safe, bitch. Uh huh. Right? They're the dumb ones. Time for a story. Let's do okay. A story. It's time for a story. <laughs> Love his transitions. It's time for a story. A very special story, especially for you. It's time for a story. It's time for a story. Sit down and listen now. Don't be a Jew. This story is called Andy. Okay. Glitch. You can be Jewish. <laughs> This story is called Andy the Frog, featuring long and convoluted similes. And I'll warn you when uh, one of those long, convoluted similes rears its old uh, head. So here we go. Once upon a time, we'll there was a frog named Andy. <laughs> Andy lived at the Patton Park Pond and had never hopped anywhere else in his entire frog life. He had three best friends. Millie, who never left her lily pad. <laughs> Billy, who was always hopping mad. <laughs> And Roger, who was arrested for possession of tadpole porn. So one um. day, one day <laughs> Andy saw something hop across the grass on the other side of the pond. Millie, Billy, Roger looks at Andy. Across the pond stood the most beautiful frog Andy had ever seen. She's gorgeous, said Millie. She's beautiful, said Billy. <laughs> Bit old for my taste, said Roger. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's gone. I need to go find her, said Andy. I need to follow my little frog heart. So Andy followed the beautiful frog's footsteps into the forest. He then came across a turtle. You can't pass, said the turtle. Please, said Andy. No, said the turtle. And uh, this is the first long convoluted simile. Okay. Then there was a rustling in the bushes, and like a man who had been shot in the chest with a rifle, the turtle was shot in the chest with a rifle. <laughs> Andy kept moving, but at this point, like the doctor of the Kenyan track team, his patience ran thin. Um, Andy kept moving. Uh, 
He then came across a giant crocodile, and the crocodile began to chant. I woke up this morning and I sat on a log. I opened up the menu. The menu said, frog. <laughs> and he said, no, no, please let go of me. I can feel myself dying. You're ripping out my insides. I'm never going to find her, am I? There's no God, is there? Fuck. <laughs> the end. The end. So it's the end of that story. <laughs> okay, well, that took a turn. Um... Very positive, uplifting. Yeah, if you're curious, the moral of that story, story for the children is irrelevant because we're humans. Why would it apply to us? Wow. Um, you know, my father is so hard to get along with because he's such a man's man. You know, he believes, like, for example, you should always fight fire with fire, which is a horrible way to live your life, um, especially for him because he's a firefighter. So. <laughs> um, he was fired. That was as stupid as we get. But let's get a little stupider, huh? There's a creepy old man fishing in the park And the only problem is He tied a candy bar to the end of his line He's trying to catch a kid uh -huh. You know, that stuff I'm Trying to get a little more mainstream <laughs> Um People complain about the way I act on stage Very often, you know, they say like I repeat jokes Or they also say that they say, they don't get, again, that this is an act on stage, and they think on stage I act too arrogant, too self-obsessed, solipsistic, self-contained, synonyms. And they want me to be, they want me to be a comic of the people, you know, relate to the people with the overarching glue of comedy. So, I want to do a little bit of a relatable comedy for you guys. <laughs> I'm like you guys, you know, once a week I like to slip into a deep existential depression where I lose all my sense of oneness and self-worth. <laughs> and what I like to do in order to assure myself that I am unique, and I'm not just one of many small, white, indistinguishable, perfectly cylindric checker pieces in Jesus and Satan's backgammon game, is I will, I'll say a group of words that I think no one has ever said in that order, so that Okay. When I say it, I feel like, look at me, participating in this new moment that no one's ever been a part of. So I'll say something random, like, uh, like peanut butter tribadism, or uh, I'm your father and I loved your comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> or at first I was uncomfortable leaving him alone with my children, but then I saw his mustache. Phew. Wow. Or, uh, or yo, check out this Amish website. Or, um... Yeah? Or I work at a toll booth and I don't want to kill myself. <laughs> too, too real. <laughs> oh, yo, man, my life's about three things, man. Three things. Getting money, getting pussy, and the Dewey Decimal System. Or, uh... uh okay. <laughs> Gotta love the Dewey De Decimal System. That's, uh... Oh, hey, can you hold my fanny pack? What it's I'm all about. fuck a woman. <laughs> Um, if I could break, I, 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 I want to thank you all for being here because uh, I mean, it, it, I'm so grateful that you'd all come here and spend uh, an hour of your time with me. And if you're watching at home or whatever, on a computer or something, uh, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Genuinely, I, I, this is my favorite thing to do. And I'm so grateful for people watching it and enjoying it. Um, okay, <laughs> I will now recede back into my stage persona. <laughs> just blacked out for 20 seconds. Thank you for coming. Love songs used to be so beautiful. You know, let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient, it thrives upon a table. T.S. Eliot, beautiful. Love songs nowadays, just as beautiful, guys. Usher, Justin Bieber, 1D, you know them. But these new artists, they've done something very strange to the format of the love song. They've changed it a bit. And I tried to capture how they've changed the format of the love song with this love song. I hope you enjoy it and mark the differences. Okay. Jason Derulo. I love your 
hair, I love your name, I love the way you say it. I love your heart and you're so smart cause you gave away it. I love your sis, I love your dad, I love your mom. But more than all of that, I love the fact that you are dumb enough to not realize everything I've said has been said before in a thousand ways, in a thousand songs, sung with the same four chords, but you'll still love it and let me finger you. <laughs> Finger you, finger you. Oh, girl, I hope you don't think that I'm rude when I tell you that I love you, boo. I also hope that you don't see through this cleverly constructed ruse designed by a marketing team cashing in on puberty and low self-esteem and girls' desperate need to feel loved in. Yeah. America says we love a chorus, but don't get complicated and bore us. No meaning might be missing. We need to know the words after just one listen. So repeat stuff, 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 repeat stuff. Yeah, oh, you know it. Pretty good musical commentary here. I love my baby and you know I couldn't live without her But now I need to make every girl think the song's about her Just to make sure that they spread it like the plague So I describe my dream girl as really, really vague Like, I love your hands cause your fingerprints are like no other I love your eyes and their bluish, brownish, greenish color I love it when you smile, that you smile wide And I love how your torso has an arm on either side now, If you're my agent, you might be thinking Oh no, sound the alarms You're not appealing to little girls who don't have arms but they wow. can use iTunes so fuck them who needs a <laughs> oh, oh hello Satan ah oh. uh, well I mean oh, Satan, you taste so good. that's part of the music repeat industry stuff, too repeat stuff repeat stuff repeat stuff repeat stuff everybody come on louder I can't hear you <laughs> Young ones, listen up. I'm in magazines full of model teens so far above you. So read them and hate yourself. And pay me to tell you I love you. <laughs> and your parents will always come along. Because their little girl is in love. And how could love be wrong? How could love be wrong? When you repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff. I am a vessel, six, six, six. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, it's not right. We know it's not funny, but we'll stop beating this dead horse when it stops spitting out money. But until then, we will repeat stuff. Very nice. Uh, thank you so much. You guys have been, um, you guys have been absolutely amazing. You've been absolutely amazing. Uh, that's the end of the show. I probably should have <laughs> ended it on a sort of higher note there. Still like but uh, yeah, that's the end of eight one. Minutes I left. hope you liked it. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. How are you? I haven't seen you since like freshman year. Oh my God. Uh, you were so like skinny and weird back then. Uh, I, I don't now think. You're, um, Anyway, I don't think much is strange there. You should totally come to this party I'm having tonight with a bunch of my college friends. Um, it's going to be off the chain hook. It's going to be so mm -hmm. good. You can play chain some hook. songs for us or something. Um, I've been telling everybody how good of friends we were uh, back in the day. Um, I know we never talked or hung wow. out ever, wow. but um, I think that's what made our friendship so special, you know? Anyway, text me. Okay. Bye. Mr. Burnham. How you doing? Good? Good. Uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm an agent from out in Los Angeles. Uh, really dig your stuff, man. It's, it's out there. You know, I totally get it. 
Uh, and the best part about it, man, you got all these young fans, uh, and which is great because young people they're they're very passionate and they're very uh, they're very reliable consumers. Uh, but what you got to do in order to take your career to the next level, you got to cater more heavily to them. All right, we've done studies. Young people do not respond to this, you know, introspective material or these challenges to the form. You know, young people want jokes they can relate to. Okay, so. Write a write a silly song about Facebook, you know. Write some, yeah. write some jokes about uh, Twitter or or we all want. cereals or, or Razor scooters. Relate to them, you know. Also, you got to reestablish the presence scooters. on the internet, buddy. All right, it's not important whether the material's good or not. What's important is that you keep the Bo Burnham brand alive and well. You get it? Cool. We'll discuss more later. I know it's a lot. Uh, my number is three one zero five five five. Uh, mm -hmm. Fag. What up, wow. dude? What's up? How are you, man? You've changed, bro. You've changed. I never knew you, but uh, my friend's old roommate's friend said he knew you in high school and you became a real asshole once all this comedy stuff started happening. What, what is it, man? You think you're better than us? <laughs> better than us just because you're tall? Whoa, congrats, man. You're tall. Wow, it's incredible. Whoa, you want a trophy How tall for is being he? tall? You want to, we should just give trophies to tall things and every tree and building will have a trophy. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Yo, why are you acting all quiet and weird right now? Yo, I know why you are. It's because you're an arrogant prick. That's why. Wow. An arrogant fucking prick. I once heard that you actually act quiet because you're shy and introverted in real life and that people shouldn't expect you to act the same way off stage as you do on stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you want to buy some weed? <laughs> oh my god. Bo, oh my god. Bo. 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 Oh my god. Mr. Burnham. Bo. 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 Oh my god. Mr. Burnham. Bo. 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 Oh my god. Mr. Burnham. Bow, 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 oh my god. Mr. Burnham. Bow, 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 oh my god. Mr. Fag, Mr. Mr. Fag, bow, oh my god. Mr. Fag, Mr. Mr. Fag, bow, oh my god. Fag, mit, mit, fag, mit, fag, bow, oh my god. Fag, mit, mit, fag, mit, fag, mit, mit, fag, mit, fag, mit, mit, fag, mit, mit, fag. I am Satan, Lord of Darkness. What? Well, that's a shame. Hey! Hey! What the hell? Hey! Hey! You're not gonna hit the girl. That's sexist. Mr. 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 We think you've changed, bro. We know best. You suck. We think you've changed, bro. We know best. You suck. We think we know you. 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 Mr. 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 Bow. Oh my god. Bow. Oh my god. Bow. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my
Mr. Burnham. Very nice. Well, are you going to school in the fall? What? You going to school this year? No, you and the uncle, and I say that's my soul. Yeah, right. Who's your teacher going to be? Mrs. Blanket. Who? Mrs. Blanket. Mrs. Boynton? No, Mrs. Mrs. Boynton is going to be Mrs. Blanket. Oh. I'm going to go, that's my friend, Mrs. B that's my teacher, Mrs. Blanket. And then, I'm gonna, that, that's my teacher, Mrs. Blanket. Rosie, what do you think you're going to do at school? Oh, I'm going to bring Dylan in, in the fruit shack and, 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 and pick a bell and, and, and all of my stuff. And all my stuff and banana and apple. Yeah, I know, you're going to eat some snacks, but what else are you going to do there? Have a drink, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. That was, uh, that was fun. I think, uh, I think the second half might have been even better than the first. I mean, <laughs> we started off with some rather amusing mime, uh, and uh, all the comedy this time was pretty great. Uh, the poems were fun. That was a fun bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kind of skimming through it again. Uh, and then the first song was... Uh... Oh, yeah, the, the, the God one. That was... Uh... That was really fun. That was really well well played. That was good stuff. Uh, yeah. And his story. That was fairly amusing. Uh, yeah, just everything was good. All the comedic bits. It, it really had me laughing through the whole thing pretty well. Uh... I guess there really only were two songs this time in terms of like the ones he sang, uh, the God one, and then uh, his uh, critique of the music industry, which uh, was, I think, less funny, but it was also very. Uh, <laughs> it was. It, it made the point well. It really uh, provided some very uh, on the point on-the-nose uh, commentary about the music industry that just <laughs> summed it up all pretty well. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we ended off with this uh, whole... I don't even know what you want to call this. I mean, we had the messages, which were fairly amusing. <laughs> I'm sure he does get messages of those three varieties all the time. And... Uh, they were fun, and then he turned them into some kind of weird song uh, and dance routine. And it was, uh, <laughs> I mean, kind of, I guess, like the intro bit, sort of, but uh, but different. I think it, uh, I don't know, a little less random maybe, but it was, it was good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, overall, really good stuff here. I think I did prefer the second half. The first half was really good, too. Uh, yeah, overall, I th I think I'm a fan. I mean, Bo, he's uh, he's an entertaining guy, and this was a good show, and uh, yeah, I definitely definitely enjoyed it. Anyway, hope you liked the reaction. Let me know if you did, and see you in the next one.